All right, so today on the wonderful, lovely gaming Matty Rocks, we're going to be showing you guys how to uh, basically go show you guys how to actually play, okay, RetroArch, or how to actually use RetroArch in a sense. Now, if you guys know, RetroArch is an emulation software. But it has more, it's more than just an emulation software. It's a front end emulation software. It's a software that you can play, how can I put it this way? You can play any game up to the 3DS. No, any mobile device up to 3DS. Now you cannot play, some of the limitations is I don't think you got the PS3 emulator in there yet, because that's still a work in progress, nor the Xbox emulators and nor the Wii U semu in there. I'm not for sure on that sure on that because I haven't barely touched on on it. So in order to have RetroArch, you're going to need to go to retroarch.com. Okay. Or you can type it in it should bring RetroArch it should be in the first one on Google. I use Firefox for all my stuff, but you can use whatever browser you fancy using. Okay, now you can get to get RetroArch, or you can come up here to the Downloads tab up here, and it will bring it up. Now, you could click on Download the Stable Build, or Download the Nightly Build. Okay, but it's detecting that I have a OS Windows 32, but it, I actually have a 64-bit installer. Okay, Download for whatever program that you're using. Now, I am using myself, I'm using a, this one here, the Windows 7, 8, 9, okay? You also can download it via Xbox, Xbox One, Raspberry Pi, but it, and Linux, Android, iOS, TV, and Mac OS. Oh yeah, and it's iOS and Apple TV. Then you also got Mac, OS X, High Sierra Later, and Metal 2, and Mac OS X, and OS X 10. Then you got the PS Vita, PSP, PS2, and PS3. And you got the PS4, the Switch, the Wii U, the Wii, the GameCube, the 3DS, and 2DS Family, Steam Link, and web browsers. But the web browsers isn't there now. Now, I'm going to be downloading the Windows 64 bit. Now, you can choose to either choose to download the installer or download the, um, download or choose the, the installer. Now, I'm going to choose the installer, but as you guys can see that it's going to ask you to save. And for what, with all intensive purposes, I have downloaded this just enough to show you guys on how to, I don't know how I actually play, but I think I did delete, nope, RetroArch 64, okay, we're just going to basically replace that, replace it, so, as it's downloading, downloading, that's all you're going to need, now, I'm going to allow it to reset itself, but I'm not going to install the application, the application, so, for all intents and purposes, I'm going to cancel this, okay? It's going to, it'll download from there, but I already have it installed and stuff. stuff. But you also can go down and see RetroArch. I already have RetroArch installed for all intents and purposes. You know, I also have a few extra things that I've been testing it out. But if you go into Downloads, okay, and we go and we find that I canceled RetroArch, it should, if it's not in your thing here, it's because I canceled it, and I should, and I, but you would run, no, what I will do, what I'll do is we're going to actually re restart that, okay, it will take us a little bit of time, a little bit of time, now, I'm not going to show you guys on how to actually install or get ROMs, now, for all intents and purposes, I have um, a PSP, 
the PSP emulator because I've tried that one out on the previous channel. I also have a few other notorious emulation software that I've played with before. I've played with the PS PlayStation emulators. I've also played with LaunchBox. But LaunchBox requires you to have the individual emulators themselves. I have also played with uh, N64, Project N64. I've also played with a few other emulators out there. Played with MAME. But that's just a few of my emulation processes. I've also played with, around with, the Dolphin emulator as well. But other, but only the GameCube section, I haven't played with the Wii section yet. Because there hasn't been really a need for me to actually test that out and try it out anyway. Well, and if there's games that are on there that I can use... Views. The only games that I'd probably showcase is Modern Warfare 3. And if I'm going to do that, I'm going to play it on PC rather than play it on the actual emulator itself because that's just beside the point. But today we'll show you how how the how to download cores. We'll show you how to um, get a few of these emulators running, running and stuff. So I will also be utilizing... For all intents and purposes, an Xbox 360 controller. You can use probably other controllers like a Wiimote and other, and other tests. So, once you click on Metro Arch or download it, it will. I'll usually click on it here from the actual web browser itself. But if you did, didn't, you can also come down here and click on it through here as well. So, so hold on. Let. I don't know why RetroArch is not installed, so we'll go from here. Now, once you get RetroArch, it'll come up with Welcome to RetroArch 1.79 setup. Okay, if you have something all in this, I'd probably, or, some, or doing the nightly builds, I wouldn't recommend it. I would stick with the stable, at least for now. Okay, click accept the terms, click next. Click next. This folder already exists. Contains cancel. Now, what will what will happen is that RetroArch, since I've already got it installed, there's two. I would highly recommend that you install the 9.0c runtime, but also make sure that you disable this check any programs that are attached to it, and be careful what you are installing. Anyway, okay, I'm gonna cancel the setup because I already have it installed. So now I have it installed under my game drive under actual retro arch. Okay. Now this is now I'm running this on a Windows I'm running this on an i4 on Intel i5 4 430 something I think. And I'm at least running it on an i5 an older thing. So now we come down here Okay, we go to RetroArch.exe, okay. Or you can go over, if you're in Windows 10, you can go over and actually search it through that way. Now, as you guys can see, there is a whole bunch of different options. There's all my games that I have. I've been playing around with this for a little bit just to kind of see how things are running. Um, my PSP emulations works just fine. My Nintendo... My NES, SNES, my DS, my GameCube. Oh no, my N64. Doesn't I haven't been able to figure out how to get them to work with Bomberman 64 because it's the only game I actually play. And then you also got the GameCube emulation. Now, now we go over here to download. Your yours is going to look a little different than mine. It's going to have load cores. Now I've downloaded the 3D Engine one. Okay, what I want to do is I want to actually see if I can delete the core itself. Okay. Oh, 
okay, downloading a core. So now in order to download a core, as you can see that we got a whole bunch of these different sections. You can download Arcade from MAME up to 2016. You got the Atari 2600 Stella 14, and that you have the the Atari 52, the Atari 7800, the Atari Jaguar, Lynx, Bandai, Wonderswan, okay, the Accurate Liberal, the Balanced Liberal, the BSNES Performance Cannonball, the Commodore, you got your DOS, you got your, you got your Mantel, you got your mic, got a whole bunch of different things. Now, the one that I do want to show you guys is that if you have something like this, and you have a game that comes out, you'll know that, that I will actually be doing the PC XSR mod and the Beetle. It does come with the PlayStation 2. I don't know if that's true. There's the PlayStation Portable. Portable. And as you can see, I just, all I have to in order to download, I just click on it and it will download that that thing. So this is playing through the Midnaffin PSX as well. So now you got a whole bunch of those. Now if you were looking for and finding where you have your stored content, you can go over here to shirt scan directory. I have all my most of all my emulators through here. Okay. As you guys can see, I also have main, but I don't have a lot of main stuff. And you guys can also see that I do have a lot of Sims stuff on here. The Sims 2 Complete, you know. Uh, now, now, I could scan this directory. Okay. It's going to scan the NES... SNES directory because I put those in the same directory because you know it'll notify it'll notice whether or not it's an actual NES thing or not. As you guys know, that in order to run a let's say a PS to say a a NES game, an SNES game. See how I have the different ones? It's gonna run based on what the emulation requires. So, like, let's say we want to run Super Bomberman 2. Okay? Or... Yeah, Super Bomberman 2. Okay. <sighs> now, you can set course. So, now, if you already have something like this, it's already going to be able to run the content. If you click run and it's not set up with a core association, you can also it'll automatically choose that. Now it will allow you to select whatever core you want. I'm gonna leave it with the current core that it has, and then we can click run. And there is nothing that you have to set up with this. If this is okay, and it works. Okay, we're just going to play one round of Bomberman, just to kind of show you guys that it actually truly does work.
Ah! And that's... And that's how I died. Okay. But that's just showcasing you how to set up. How to set up. Now. Now, if you are using a controller, I highly recommend that you hit F1 on your keyboard. And that will bring you back to your state wherever you have. Have and you can close out the content. Now, if you are ever trying to get this to run and you are having some problems... Problems. I would highly recommend that you put it under in GL. Um, I have it under GL. I have it under Wasabi. And this is basically everything that I have in the settings. Now, I also have the screen resolution. I typically leave it the way that your screen resolution is set up for. But if you have certain, ga certain like games and things, as you guys can see... It has like a whole buttload of resolutions that you guys can pick. So, and then you got a whole bunch of these now. As you can see, mine's running pretty close to 50, 60 frames. Frames, but as you can see, it's pretty, it's pretty expansive. That's it. The audio is pretty too. I have it usually set up to my de default device. I have it set up at 128. Legacy, it'll be set up at a traditional 64, I believe, or pretty close to that. But that's basically all I have it. And resampling quality, I have it on highest and mono.dsp. Basically, it just allows me to play things in mono. And I don't have to uh, worry about my headphones. Because, it, as you know, my headphone port on this one is... my. This is not a 3.5. I think this is probably a 2.5. But, yeah, you could also save your favorite... Um, things like I have Cubert and Super Mario All Stars connected. These are some of my past previous games on this list. And then I, you can listen to music, uh, images, you can do those. And yeah, start net play. It, it's, pretty, it's pretty extensive emulator. Um, if you wanted to, you could also try and load a core. If something doesn't run right away for you. But that's how you can get to run RetroArch. So if you guys did enjoy this this little beginner's guide on RetroArch, um, hit that like button. If you guys want to see more of my previous, previous tutorial, tutorials, um, most notably the PSP emulator. I've been using that one is my all-time favorite system, system to emulate. But I have a few others here as well. So if you guys do want to see more RetroArch, hit, hit that, let me know down in the comments. Also, if you guys did, did enjoy this and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. And hit that bell notification with the all on, not personalized, but all. Because you guys can get everything up to date with all things gaming, many rock. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. Or the next tutorial, or whatever.